we'll get straight into it. So like I was saying, probably the hottest topic right now is the Silicon Valley Bank. So this bank, as well as the Singapore Bank, have both failed and collapsed across the weekend. That took a lot of people by surprise, and even the markets were reflecting that. With these two banks marked the second and third largest collapse. I think it was since Lehman Brothers in 2008, so around the GFC time. Um, this is the second and third largest collapse. And government departments have stepped in to protect des um, depositors in an attempt to keep the faith in the whole banking system, especially around the U.S., so what's your take on this situation, Stephen? Do you see this as the beginning of a pending financial collapse or is it more like a little spot fire? Um, it's, it's really hard to say what, what's going to trigger it. Uh, gold and crypto have gone crazy over the last um, 48 hours uh, with what's happening. And what you've got to remember here is um, SVB and Signature Bank uh, with them being, they're, they're like the 18th and 19th largest banks um, uh, in the world or something in the world or, or, or in America anyway. Um, and they're the largest banks that, that um, supported all the tech industry. So pretty much everything that, that SV, SVB did and Signature did out of New York was back all the <clears throat> tech companies. Uh, so if you had a tech startup in the Valley, you're pretty much going to be banking with, with Silicon Valley Bank because that, that's where everyone uh, in that industry went uh, and, and away they go. Uh, the likes of um, uh, Uber and um, uh, what was the other one? Square and someone else, um, they all started using these banks, uh, right? So, and at, at the time that they've grown out of them and, and they use them a little bit more. Silicon Valley Bank had a lot of, deposits from some of the largest crypto um, uh, houses out there and crypto, um, uh, what do you call them, projects out there, so, so did Signature. So it, it's really interesting um, to, to watch the whole tech world, you know, friends that I know that are in the tech world in the States basically just went into panic mode uh, because all their processing and, and everything like that was all done by the back end of these, these um these banks and pretty much from everything was running really, really smoothly until from what I can gather about, about Wednesday afternoon, Friday, uh, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, there was pretty much a message go out that there was a run on SVB. And then that basically started the run that actually started the run on the bank. Uh, and because these banks had so small of capital ratios, which is what most banks in the West are, you know, their, their, their deposits on hand versus how much they've got out uh, is so small that um, a small run was enough to, to topple these banks. Um, and then that's, that's just the trust game. Now, this could be um, the bigger banks in the world getting rid of their tech counterparts um, so that they can start moving in uh, global digital currencies, the government-backed ones, uh, or... It could be just simply um, part of the ever ever moving cycle, which seems to be uh, around a 10, 11 year cycle um, that's driven by um, collapses in the tech space. Uh, we see it quite a bit. You know, you know so you had the 2000 um, bubble, which, which burst, and you had another one, 12, uh, 11, 12, um, and then now this. So it could be that it's just a natural part of the cycle, and this is part of the the uh, ecosystem that's blown up. Um, there could be a whole heap of things. But some of the things that you have to, you look at and you go, this is not a coincidence is, um, so on Friday, SVB America went, on Saturday, SVB UK went, which has now been sold for one pound to HSBC. So it's it's been totally absorbed uh, into, um, uh, into HSBC. Uh, that needed to happen or otherwise basically Monday morning, yesterday morning, UK time, uh, pretty much every tech, major tech company in the UK would not have worked. You know, people that had wallets and all this sort of stuff with money in them that was being backed by SVB in the UK would have lost all their money. So the HSB stepped in, they're now providing all the banking services for those, those businesses. Um, Sunday afternoon in the, U in the US, uh, Signature Bank failed and went over, went under. Um, and then again on Monday morning in the US, uh, there was um, a 
uh, several little payment processes and all that sort of stuff went under. I expect this week in the US there'll be quite a few um, small to mid cap sort of uh, tech companies, payment processes, crypto projects, um, you know, uh, online payment companies, anything that relies heavily on the services that these banks would have prov provided, um, any tech company with a wallet basically, um, to, to be wobbly, uh, if not fall over, if they can't get their banking services and the cash um, dragged out. Um, but in the lead up to that, we had F FTX, Silvergate, Voyager, uh, Three Arrows, these are all very woke, very left, very um, Democrat-aligned um, tech businesses. So was SVB, so was Signature, you know, and, and, and that's not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence that um, banks that, that, and institutions and companies that go heavily down this ESG route, which all these guys were proud of saying we're super ESG and we're all this and all that, uh, they're all going to fall over because you can't just run uh, a business on ideology, you know, and, and that's what they were trying to do. Um, and um, uh, it, um, you know, it, it hasn't worked for them. So. Mm. Yeah, and one thing that I found interesting looking into the whole situation was that, um, and it reminds me of the whole COVID situation, the elite people know and being able to see stuff happen in advance because we saw that, the CEO of SVB, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank, weeks before this whole thing happened, he actually sold 3.6 million worth of shares, which is 11% of his holdings. And then the CFO of the company sold 600K worth of shares, which was 32% of his holdings. So do you think they saw anything happening before it actually happened? Um, it could have been, or it could be that that's the way that they get paid. Um some sometimes uh, in these these type of institutions, the way that these guys get paid, you got to remember is because if you're an investor in the US, your tax rate is super low, and if you're rolling that over, um, doing a ten thirty one or, or similar um, exchange in the US, you pretty much don't pay tax. Where if you're paying tax uh, as um, <clears throat> as an employee. It, you know, on, on sort of the money that they, they're on, you know, 12, 13, 14 million dollars, you, you're going to pay super high tax rates. So it could be that, um, that that's they're just selling shares to for their, their own benefit to, you know, keep their lights on. Uh, or it could have been that they saw stuff happening. Um, if it was that they really knew what was happening. And what was going on, you would have seen a lot more of it happen at Signature and other banks as well. Um, I just think that it's it's probably they had an inkling that something was going on, um, but they couldn't predict that um, that the rumor and all that that actually started the bank run um, pushed them over the edge. Um, but um, yeah, look, look, it could have been, it could be not. Uh, it's it's hard to say because just purely and simply because of the way that people get compensated in, in tech in the US. Yeah, yeah that's a good perspective. Um, next question I had on this point was, do you see any similarities or any differences between this situation compared to the GFC? Because um, seeing as these are the second and third largest following that GFC collapse. Yeah, there is a lot of, um, there is a lot of um, similarities because it was derivatives that that blew up the GFC really quickly, um, you know. So basically, um, there, it was all false. There was nothing underlying the actual um, uh, bits of paper that they were trading with the of the CDOs and CDMs and God knows what else that they were calling them, <clears throat> the bonds, basically. Um, very similar here, as in it's crypto, right? Uh, in in ninety percent of all cryptos. There is nothing underlying it. So if you have a look at Silicon Valley Bank, for instance, uh, USDC, um, which dropped, its peg blew up uh, over the weekend because purely and simply because it had 3% of its holdings in SVB. Now, that so for, for, for the peg to be broken by the market, purely and simply because you've got 3% of your overall holdings uh, of, a, 
of what's supposed to be a stable coin, right? If that can panic the a stable coin and destroy the peg on it, it means that it's nothing. There's nothing there. It, it's just it's fucking, you know, uh, it's just air, and, and that's the biggest problem. Is um, there is nothing tangible behind this stuff other than cash, uh, and we all know cash is worthless and the trust that is supposed to be in these these cryptos and that is not there either so the first thing that goes is trust but with at least with currencies and stuff like that people look at it and go well there is a government and they are printing money in in, in a shitload of raids and there is physical assets and there is this so that and they sort of had some sort of trust in a government um when that trust in government goes watch out because buddy the whole thing will collapse but there is no trust in these these digital assets in this digital world <clears throat> it's too early we're, we're only really we're only probably 15 years into the the digital revolution so to speak and every 18 months two years um it's changing all the time that the the front of it's changed uh where, where at least with the industrial revolution you know, you, you could see the steam engine. You know, you could see see the steel mill. You could see what was being produced at the back end. A lot of people don't have trust in something that they can't see. Right? Um, and and once that they'll jump on a bandwagon, but once they lose that trust and confidence in that they they can't physically see something, um, you end up with the implosions that we've got a, around the crypto world at the moment. That said, a lot of money's moved into crypto. Um, and but it's moved into things like gold back and uh, Bitcoin and that sort of stuff. So it's moved back into the one percent uh, of of that ecosystem. So you know, I, I think, think crypto, uh, well, I, I think Bitcoin in the last twenty four hours was up by nine, uh, up by twenty percent, um, which is just fucking phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So what's the reason people wouldn't trust the whole um, digital? as much as as everything else because it's not tangible but when you think about it, it's, it's similar to apple pay or something like that you can't really see that apart from on your phone so how's it how does that compare to uh, moving towards cryptos yeah so apple pay and, and crypto are two totally different things apple pay is a convenience for your card right it's it's convenient so you don't have to carry your card in your wallet but you still need to have a card Right, because mm -hmm. so, you've got to upload it and, and do all that sort of stuff. So there's a convenience factor there. So people trust convenience more than they trust uh, other um, other market stuff that's new, right? And um, at the moment, uh, I think I can't remember what the actual stat is, but the whole crypto world uh, is is pretty much run. It's a bit like the Twitter. Twitterverse for um, for politicians, you know, something like three percent of the world is actually on Twitter. So every, all the politicians of the world think the entire world, you know, revolves around it. It's the same thing with with, with crypto. You know, a very small portion of the, the entire global population is actually engaged with crypto, right? very very small slithers. So it doesn't take much for trust to be lost when you're dealing with such a small amount where well, when you think about when you're dealing with government-backed fiat currencies for all their failures, it's pretty much 90% of the world is engaged with it, right? You know, so it's it's a lot different and more depth um, of a of a trust market, and and that's what's not there in the crypto world yet, or in the digital currency world, or the digital asset world um, at the moment. So, um, but it'll get there. At some point in time, um, as I've said before, smart contracts are definitely the way to go. Um, and how smart contracts can be used uh, to cut out banks, to cut out lawyers, to cut out accountants, to cut out governments uh, for the transfer and the the um, the, the holding of assets um, you know, is definitely the way to go. But uh, I just don't think we're there yet. I really can't see uh, the depth of... Um, of all this digital currency um, well never have um, you know it, it could be just I'm an old fart and don't get it you know yeah 
And going back to the banking situation, just as a final question before we move on to the next points, we've, you've kind of touched on the immediate uh, response that's been happening after the whole collapse, but do you see any long-term influence that's going to have on the on the markets, especially when you think as an investor, do you see any long-term impacts or influences happening? Um, yeah, uh, so, yes. So it's pretty much the, the printing machines have already ramped up for quantitative easing in the US to try and stabilise the markets, which just means there's going to be more cash flowing around. It's going to be, you know, get in, if, if it can get into the right hands, the equity markets and all that sort of stuff, uh, it'll just keep going up. Those equity markets will keep pushing up. Um, there'll be more money for uh, projects and, and those that, that have the ability to access uh, that cash. Um, one of the things that was a massive standout with the failure of these two banks, the FDIC actually set up their own bank in the US, and I think it's called Bridge Bank, um, to actually take both SVB and Signature and create a new bank. That was a standout and, and something that uh, was totally new, never been done before, because normally they've sought a buyer uh, for the assets, like happened in the UK. Um, the UK just said, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> we'll guarantee up to the £100,000 limit. And then HSBC come in and said, we'll guarantee the lot, you know, and took all the assets and, and all the business and they bought the whole shebang for, for a pound. In the US, the FDIC, which has the authority to open a bank pretty much at the drop of a hat, um, did so and then absorbed these two banks themselves. Now, that, that's scary in a way because um, means that, that these banks have basically been nationalised, right? So then we're now talking about national um, intrusion. The, the market um, didn't step in and do it. Now, that could be that the market was never asked to step in and, and try and, and buy these banks. Um, or it could be that no one in the market, um, and that's the, the, what is it, the, the 18 guys, 18 major banks that sit around, tw uh, sorry, 25 major banks that sit around the, um, the Fed table, uh, all basically put their hands up and said, no, we don't want them. Um, now, that could be because they are, digital banks and they are in the tech industry and they're basically going against mainstream banking. It could be, you know, a big fuck you to, to that part of the world. Um, it could be that, you know, it's just a bucket of shit. And then if you put two buckets of shit together, you get a larger bucket of shit. Um, and and that, that could be just it, it, as simply as what it is. So, um, it, it, yeah, very interesting um, sort of outlook on, on where, where things are at uh, at the moment in the US. It'd be interesting to see what happens with this bridge bank. They've said they're going to um, basically honour uh, all deposits, not just the uh, $250,000 FDIC uh, cap. And they're going to, you know, uh, go everything. So, um, yeah. And that alone could be enough to stop a run on um, any other bank because people will see that and go, oh, well, the government will just buy them anyway, right? So there's no, no point um, um, looking at it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's a really interesting with, situation. Yeah, with the quantitative easy going, stock markets will keep rising. 